Hey everyone and welcome to another video. And today we're going to be covering LP ranges and LP fluctuation. This is one of my personal kind of toolkits that I use to kind of regulate my own, I guess, emotions during this all journey. And, and it's a toolkit that I recommend to basically every one of my clients for really managing your relationship with SolarQ. Now, there are three main things we're gonna be covering today. The first one is what is an LP range? Why is it helpful to really understand LP ranges for your relationship with SolarQ? Number two, LP bell curves and visual representations of what maybe an LP bell curve uh, may look like. And then kind of number three, showing some examples of gameplay footage, which may kind of explain why you potentially will fluctuate wide in wide variety of LP, or maybe, you know, you may not fluctuate at all, kind of showing very practical exa examples of what this may look like. So the way I love explaining this LP range concept is I like taking the example of an El Clasico Emerald 4 player sitting at zero LP. Now, in my experience in my coaching program, most players fluctuate roughly, if I'm being conservative, around 200 plus minus 200 LP. And what this basically means is that when the stars align, maybe they're feeling really high confidence, the meta aligns with their champ pool, you know, they got a few lucky wins here and there, they're playing at the top of their game, things are going well for them. They could push from zero LP in Emerald 4 to probably Emerald 2, right? But at the same time, because they're not actually an Emerald 2 player, they're not, they're not really you know, going to be able to be consistent in Emerald 2 and they got a bit lucky, you know, the system inevitably, inevitably balances out. Maybe the meta chain shift, uh, shifts around a little bit. Maybe, you know, they get some, you know, auto losses here or there. Basically, what you'll get is that that person can also, you know, go all the way down to say, let's say Platinum 3 or Platinum 2. And let's just be conservative. Let's just say Platinum 2. It's a little bit weird to think of it like this, isn't it? Isn't it? Where a player could be platinum two, but in the same week or the same fortnight could actually be an emerald two. And this is where a lot of people kind of really lose their mind in solo queue because they don't really understand how this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint a picture of what I typically see. Again, um, people in their solo queue journey. So let's take Jim Bob here. Jim Bob, again, stars align, climbs to emerald two over the course of maybe 25 games or something, right? Things go really well for him. He wins a bunch of games. Meta suits his champel. Feeling at the top of the world. Amazing. Congratulations. Peaks at Emerald 2. Now, the, the very block, after the, the, ne the next block, so let's say he gets to Emerald 2, 0 LP. The next block, he plays another three block of games. And then, inevitably, he loses. Maybe he goes 0-3. Things don't go his way. Now, the reality is that in his mind, he's like, oh my god, I'm at Emerald 2. This is amazing. Oh, I never thought I would get this high. But then, you know, he's now focusing on the LP. You know, he gets a bit tilted at these losses. Maybe the next block he goes one and two, and then inevitably the losses start piling on. And now he's, he's not letting go of those past blocks, and he starts dropping, and he starts dropping, and he starts dropping. And now because he's actually mentally compromised, and he probably is anchored over here, like, oh my God, I was at Emerald 2, now I'm so far away. Oh my God, what do I do? He keeps dropping, he keeps dropping to the point where he's tilting now, he's out of, he's lost his mind, he's tilt queuing. And then all the way he goes to Platinum 2. Now, at this point in Platinum 2, you know, even if he's mentally compromised, even if he's tilted, you know, his baseline kind of muscle memory should be able to kick in now and win games at Platinum 2. Or maybe he's had enough and he's mentally reset, whatever. And then he gets to the bottom of Platinum 2 and he's like, oh my God, I was Emerald 2 just a week ago. <clears throat> but look at me now, I'm in Platinum 2. Am I just a piece of shit? And they'll say, Curtis, look at this. I... I um I just dropped, they might say, I just dropped 400 LP codes or 500 LP. They might say, oh my God, what does this mean? Is this the end of the world for me? Should I make a new account? Do I need to change my champ pool? <laughs> is this, this em the Emerald Elo Hell? What's going on? The reality is that, you know, they, they were never an Emerald 2 player in the first place. And this is the tough pill to swallow. This is, this is something that people really lose their mind over. They think that just because they peak a particular rank, they, they, they anchor to this rank. They think that they, they've earned it. They think that, oh, I've climbed here. I, I, I did duo. I played a champ pool. I did it with a process. I got, surely this means I'm Emerald 2. No, peaking a rank doesn't mean that you are that rank. You need to be able to stabilize and play at that rank for a considerable amount of games. If you've played 30 games at Emerald 2 and you're still Emerald 2, congratulations. More often than not, you're an Emerald 2 player. But if you peak a particular rank, it doesn't mean jack shit. This is, this is actually the, one of the main reasons as to why buying accounts is so toxic. Because what people, what happens is they, they get this, you know, MM, this, this account with high MMR 
They peak a particular. They peak a particular rank. They play like fifty games. And they think that's an awesome sample size. When reality is nothing, and they get almost. They might climb all the way to to diamond two or something, and then inevitably they start losing games. Right? If they keep playing on that account, they start losing. They start losing, and then they start you know blaming externals. But in their mind, that the, because they kind of climb to diamond two, they've anchored at that point. They think that Riot's wrong. No, they think that they're in the right. They think that they deserved Diamond 2. So now they get into this toxic cycle of obviously, you know, the they're, they're going to lose inevitably because they're not a Diamond 2 player. They start losing. They start losing. They blame other shit, like whether it's the meta or teammates or Riot matchmaking, whatever. And they just go ahead and buy another account. But in reality, they were never that rank anyway. So this is why, this is again, one of the things that people don't understand about the rank system is that it requires you to play a decent sample size of games for the system to actually understand your level of play and where you're at. The system always works. But again, people get really bogged down in the, in the oh, what rank am I after 30 games? When they, when they should be thinking, okay, where, where am I at after 75 or 100 games? Because that's what really matters. But anyway, that's just a bit of a tangent point. So either way, um, we have this kind of fluctuation occurring. Now, there are four kind of main reasons as to why this fluctuation happens in the first place. Because you may say, well, Curtis, why is this a thing? Why do we fluctuate around 200 LP either way? Why is this the case? Good question. Well, the first one is that this is just the nature of playing a 5v5 based MOBA, right? Think about it. You're a single player in a game with 10 total players on the map. Right, so there's only a certain amount of impact that you can actually have on the game. Hence why ages a few years ago, I, I created that 30, 30, 40 video, right? Which was again, quite controversial, but again, as a general overarching philosophy, I think it's quite again, held true, where 30% of your games are roughly gonna be auto losses, 30% of your games are gonna be roughly auto wins, and 40% of the games are gonna be roughly in your control. And what this means is that you are gonna have, you know, again, LP fluctuation because you can't control the outcome of every single game. Right? What matters though is that you get in the repetitions and you're gonna be climbing, let's say anywhere from a 55% win rate, 60% win rate, whatever. And you know that's gonna eventually, over the course of a long period of time, allow you to climb the ranks. So because we're not playing a, you know, a, a Street Fighter or a game that has, you know, we, uh, we're not playing a game where we control every single variable, there is inevitably gonna be fluctuation in our, you know, in our LP, our MMR, and just our overall results in our gameplay. So welcome to playing a MOBA, welcome to League of Legends. This is one of the challenges we all face, hence why repetitions are important. Number two, the second one is Riot have actually just made a bunch of changes to LP over time. You know, there was a time whereby it was very normal to gain, let's say, plus minus 12 LP or something. But nowadays, Riot have, you know, listened to you guys in the community and the community have been very vocal about wanting more LP. Therefore, there's going to be wider fluctuations in, in ELO, um, in LP, sorry. And that's just the way it is. You know, you, rather than being kind of stuck at a rank for a long period of time, you can climb, but you, you can also slide all the way back down very quickly. People would prefer that according to Riot, you know, and their data or whatever. People would prefer this rather than having, you know, fixing your MMR the, the slow way and not really seeing much fluctuation in your kind of visual rank. So there's that. That's a factor that's very important. The third one is that there is just raw consistency in your level of play, right? So players that have very good fundamentals, you know, um, typically will have maybe less fluctuation. Players that are a bit more coin flippy in the way they play and have less consistent fundamentals can have more fluctuation. We'll cover this in a moment. Is just, there is a consistency factor at play here. And then the fourth one, which is really important, is that we're not some piece of AI that is going to perfectly express your level of play every single game, right? There is naturally going to be fluctuation in our level of play every time we sit down on the computer and play. Maybe because we haven't made peace with past blocks. Maybe because we have certain mental blocks versus particular champions. Maybe we're not in a good mood. We didn't sleep well. We don't have no energy. We forgot to drink coffee. Whatever the hell it is, we're not actually perfectly playing at our level of play every single game. And due to this kind of nature of, you know, this, this part of our nature as humans, um, there is inevitably going to be fluctuation in LP as a result of this. So these are the four main factors, and it's very important that we understand this. Now, the question then inevitably leads into, well, Curtis, why is this important for me to understand? Like, why do I need to understand this LP range crap? Why is it important for me? Well, the reason being is that this is what fundamentally allows me to make peace with games and losses. Because... I've trained my brain, and again, I'm just gonna speak from my experiences. I've trained my brain to not overemphasize any single loss, even a single block of losses, or even a single week of losses. Because I know that there is just natural, 
kind of leeway or this natural kind of fluctuation in my rank. And it's very difficult for me to make sense of where I'm at in my journey given a small sample size of games. So I need to wait. I need to really think about the big picture, kind of see if I can find what's the trend big picture. Because if I get if I get too bogged down and be like, oh my God, I'm down to minus 100 LP. Oh, oh my God, I'm, I'm plus 100 LP, yes. And I get really kind of caught up in this LP game. It's very, very confusing because I don't know where I'm at. I, I, I can't tell. I don't know if I, this is just part of the natural normal fluctuation in my rank or if this is just genuinely because I've improved. So rather than trying to get in the weeds and trying to understand this and get too bogged down in the auto losses, auto wins, I'm like, okay, yes, there is going to be automatic LP fluctuation. Yes, I'm going to have a shitty day. Yes, I'm going to have a good day. But if I just understand that there is naturally going to be this leeway in my LP either way, I can really focus my attention on just the goddamn details and the reviews and what I'm actually taking away from each game. But if you don't understand that there is this LP, LP fluctuation, what, and this is what happens, I see in my, in my program, that people lose their mind. They go 0-3 and they say, oh, Curtis, I'm down 80 LP, far out, what do I do? Is my, is my journey over? Or they go down 250 LP or 300 LP and they say, Curtis, what's happening? Should I just should I quit? Is it, am I just not made for the game? Should I should I change my champ pool? Should I what should I do? Well, you know it's worth investigation. Maybe if you're losing 300 LP, but it's not that unheard of. It's not that. It's not a huge problem, is what I'm saying. You know, it's very normal to have these wide fluctuations in LP, especially if you're not a mentally, you don't, you're not very process oriented with your approach to league, and especially if you don't have a super kind of um, well refined toolkit to kind of manage your emotions and and again um, prevent those tilt sprees either way. And most people, from my experience in in League of Legends, don't have a sophisticated toolkit. They don't know how to manage their emotions and they do inevitably carry their losses from one block into another block and they, they don't take breaks. They don't know how to make peace with things. They don't know how to review things. And inevitably, they're going to be quite um, swingy in their LP. So that's all important to understand. Now, there is another way of kind of representing this information inside of a bell curve. Now, I'm going to get roasted from the mate, the maths majors in the comments. I understand that. I'm ready for it. I'm not a math. I don't know jack shit about maths. So bear with me here. Now, this is kind of a way I like to visualize. Again, another way of visualizing LP ranges. Let's say, again, we have this El Clasico Emerald 4 player sitting at about, you know, 0 LP Emerald 4. If this is a bell curve representing, you know, probability, right? So majority of the time, that means we're going to be playing at about an Emerald 4 level, right? This is what this bell curve means. That means sometimes, but I'll be at a very small amount of time, you might, you maybe, you know, 0.5% of the time or 1% of the time or 2% of the time, you might make a, let's say, a Emerald 2 level decision or even a Diamond 4 level decision. But again, it's very, very uncommon, right? It's very, very rare. Right? The same thing goes for the other side of the bell curve where it's like, okay, maybe 5% of the time or something, I will make a decision that is at a, you know, platinum three level. Right? Again, if, if that was happening all the time, if this was the middle of the probability curve and that was happening all the time, then I would probably be a platinum three player. So, so the, you know, what the sort of behavior, the level of play, the most common behavior that you, I guess, demonstrate in game is really going to represent or shape the rank that you're at. So if I'm Emerald 4, that means usually all of most of my decisions are at an Emerald 4 level. And so when people, when people kind of climb to a rank, they automatically assume that all of the decisions they're making are of that caliber. Like if I randomly climb to Diamond 4 or something, that doesn't mean every element of my play is Diamond 4. There are going to be elements of my play that are very low and elements of my player that are very high. And so generally when we're looking to um, and again, let's overlay the LP kind of fluctuation here. Again, tying back to the probability curve here a little bit. What you might get is that we can just get lucky. You know, the games maybe might play to our inherent, you know, you know, let's say over here, some of the um, the strengths here at a, at a, at a Emerald 2 level, we can just get lucky. You know, we can, a few maybe moments in the game play towards these strengths over here at an Emerald 2 level or Diamond 4 level. And as a result, we might push, you know, we might see more of these situations and therefore climb to Emerald 2. Or maybe we might get punished for having poor fundamentals in the bottom half of our bell curve. And, you know, and therefore we might drop to Platinum 2. So again, just through probability, shit can go either way. Welcome to League of Legends. There's a lot of, again, a lot of things happening that we can't even really make sense of and even understand. So this is kind of like, in my opinion, what's happening behind the scenes. We don't even need to understand this. This is just something that I kind of mentally kind of resonate with. 
Um, and when I'm looking at clients, I can really tell how elongated their bell curve is based off the quality of their fundamentals and what they do and don't understand about the game. But we'll get that into, into a second. So let's actually go ahead and take a look at a visual rep representation of maybe what a small bell curve or let's say little LP fluctuation may look like. So I got sent this from an MLA member here. And just to really kind of, I guess, break down what we're looking at here, what you have is time on the X axis and then uh, rank on the Y axis. So he was a Z kind of Z OTP. And during this period of time, you could tell he had some pretty crazy LP fluctuations. Like he would go from the bottom of D3 up to D2 and then down to D3 and then D4. I mean, he had some pretty severe fluctuations here. Not crazy, but you know, I would say decently large fluctuations. Potentially this resulted in the quality of his fundamentals with Zed. Maybe he was a bit of a coin flip player, you know, whatever. Regardless, he decided to drop Zed and kind of learn Yon, hence the, the drop in the rank here. And he started to really work on like his early game consistency, his laning, threat assessment, really bolstering up the 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 fundamentals aspect of kind of his Yon name. And so over time, as you can see, he worked on it, he worked on it. And towards the end, notice how, look at the, look at how little these LP fluctuations are towards the end. He's really, really become a, a lot more of a consistent player. So, so again, bringing it back to the LP range, this is the sort of player now that is maybe fluctuating plus minus 50 or even 75 LP, which in the grand scheme of things is nothing. This is a player that has really worked on their fundamentals. They've really worked on the, their consistency through their gameplay, which we'll, we'll talk about in a second. And as a result, the LP fluctuation is very, very small. Now, players that have very inconsistent fundamentals or a lack of champ mastery and they're all over the place, would you know, you would see these huge spikes in LP, kind of what we saw here, obviously changing champ pools and you know inconsistent fundamentals over here. This is kind of what it can look like visually. So I, I, I don't know what program this is from. It looks like maybe Mobilitics or something. It'd be interesting to see what your LP fluctuation looks like in the grand scheme of your journey. But I thought this was really interesting in the case of his little journey there, a great little visual representation. So diving into some examples, I actually used this example in the recent BBC episode where I cover uh, Emerald Tier. But anyway, this was a Diamond 4 Echo main, and essentially this is kind of what I deem to be a very classic kind of uh, mistake that I see with people that tend to have very wide kind of LP or very kind of varying LP fluctuation where very, very, you know, severe LP fluctuation. This is one of the, again, the gameplay decisions that I see. So here was an example where the enemy Katarina kind of roamed onto top side. So we go back here and then the Katarina is kind of walking back mid. Now this Echo blindly decides to go for the, the Katarina without even taking into account what's happening on the map. We didn't know where the enemy jungler was. We weren't even aware of what our jungler was doing. We had no idea where the enemy support is, whatever. We had very limited information. So he was blindly just tunnel visioning on this decision without really factoring in the big picture. This is kind of what we call kind of a lack of map state calibration. Right, and if you're making decisions without calibrating the map state, you're gonna lead, you're gonna put yourself in a lot of coin flip situations where it could work, you could outplay your way out of it, but very easily it might not work. Right, and so this is you know typically when I'm working with clients and they have very poor lull state usage and poor map state calibration, then they're making a lot of decisions without assessing the map, you know, before so before going for that decision. Um, usually their LP fluctuations are quite wide because they might go into one game, this will work, they will snowball out of control, they will go 5-0 and, and like, yes, great, they think they're killing it. But then the next game, they make a play that's very similar, they die instead, they get snowballed on, and then they go 0-5. You can actually tell from OPGs alone, even their score lines, how much, how, I guess, uh, susceptible this person is to um, LP fluctuations. You get those, you get those OPGs all the time where I see they go 10 and 0, and the next one, like I said, they might go 0, 6. And it's, well, how is this possible? How, how, how can you go from this to this? And this is how. It's a combination of map state calibration, as well as poor fundamentals and poor threat assessment. But this is one of the major, I would say, culprits of LP fluctuation from a gameplay perspective. And just to really drive the point home, this is a very classic situation where this person was blindly hitting the tower, had no idea that their jungler was looking for a gank bot, could have easily shoved and moved and complimented his team, but was literally wasn't even aware of what the Rek'Sai was doing. Now, it's one thing to be like, you know what, I think my Rek'Sai's got the play bot by himself, I don't think he needs me, so I'm just going to get played to maybe get a recall, versus 
I actually have no clue what's happening on the map. I have no idea what's going on. You know what? I'm just going to tunnel vision on the plates in front of me. The, you know, that's a very different kind of problem. All right. And the problem that leads to LP fluctuation is the one where we're not even aware of what's happening on the map there. In this case, this RE missed a very clean kind of roam opportunity bot side. But again, doesn't even know what was happening, doesn't even pan their camera, wasn't even aware of it. And as a result, missed a really clean opportunity and was able to, you know, potentially turn around that 3v3 on bot side. So again, a very El Clasico, um, you know, poor poor play that will lead to wide LP fluctuation. Now, it's usually quite difficult to show what a very kind of, I guess, small LP range player like kind of looks like because it can manifest in so many different ways. But usually, usually they have very low deaths. So they're, you know, they're coming out of majority of their games, maybe three and one, three and oh, five and oh, but they're still losing games. And the reason for this is maybe they're playing too defensive, they're missing opportunities. It could look like this, where this was a, a high diamond player, whereby, um, you know, he just missed a clear ping window. You know, his, his lane opponent was obviously moving topside, but pinged way too late. Like, missing little details like this, where they're not doing anything majorly wrong, right? They're not dying to ganks, they're not, like, completely butchering their lanes, but, but they are missing a lot of opportunities and potentially being a little bit too timid. So that's kind of what it may look like. But again, it can manifest in so many different ways. So look, you guys don't need to, I guess, agree with the way the LP system works. Like I, I'm not here to be pro Riot and be like, yes, this is the perfect way, the perfect system. I'm just here to explain how it works, how it's gonna manifest in your own journeys. And if we can understand how the underlying system works and we can manage our expectations around that and we can really understand big picture, okay, that's probably what's happening here. Okay, this is probably part of my LP range. I'm not gonna get anchored to a rank. I'm not gonna you know, tie myself to a rank unless I've been there consistently, so on and so forth. It can really help us develop a healthier relationship with solo queue and have a more kind of, kind of even keel throughout our journey. And so again, you know, even though we've, today we've been talking about LP fluctuations, the same thing goes for even our emotional regulation. If we're getting really, really happy and really, you know, over the moon about winning a game, but then we're, you know, absolutely shitting on ourselves and in the depths of despair when we lose a game, again, this is probably not not optimal for our mental health losing uh, moving forward. But if we can actually use this kind of understanding of the LP ranges to, I guess, minimize the amount of uh, emotion that we're gonna experience in any given day, you're probably gonna have a lot more of a uh, manageable and sustainable journey in the long run. So hopefully this gives you something to latch onto, a bit of a toolkit that you guys can use. If you have any questions about it, let me know. Otherwise, um, I'll see you in the comment section. Cheers, guys.